Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Every blessed man is looking for valuable people. Nobody wants a liability and a nuisance in his place of work, in his place of business. Stop bringing the issue of sentiments and say, I have a brother somewhere, he does not want to give me a job. Are you valuable? There are many people who complain and say, you are not giving us this contract. Will you do the job if given? Value is an enhancer of favor. When you are valuable, it is easy for favor to find expression in your life. Number three, for sake of time, we have to rush. The third law, physical law that is responsible for wealth and abundance is called the law of productivity. The law of productivity. Productivity is the quality or ability to create, make, or enhance products and services. Productivity is the quality or ability to create, make, or enhance products and services. The ability to create, make, or enhance products and services. Another definition. Productivity is the ability, listen carefully, this is my definition now. The ability to refine and develop your value and then turn it into products and services that are needed and useful. And then to serve it with excellence to a targeted consumer base. I will take it again. That productivity is the ability to refine and develop your value. Your value just like crude oil. Once it remains crude, it is only potential. It cannot bring you much. You will need to refine it. You will need to develop your value. And then turn it into products and services that are needed and useful. And then to serve it with excellence to a targeted consumer base. Hallelujah. Are we learning? Please look up. If I use a fetcher and I look for any well around this environment and I fetch water, watch this now, and I use a white leather bag and I pour that water inside and I bring it to you as a dignitary, I say, this is my gift for you. Are you going to accept it? If I tell you to pay 100 naira, say for instance, for that, will you pay for it? But the same water that you are rejecting and getting angry and, and you feel insulted for being, for, for being served that water in a leather bag, someone will process that water. It's the same water from the same source sometimes and package it in a very beautiful bottle and now give it to you. And sometimes in a hotel, you can pay as much as 2,000 naira with joy. What are you paying for? It is not the water you are also paying for the refinement. Are we together now? Listen to me. As powerful as value is, your value may be sufficient for commendation, but maybe not for reward. You have to turn from value to productivity. Many gifted people in this nation remain bankrupt because they are not productive. They are valuable. I can sing. But nobody will reward you because it is not yet refined. I can preach, but nobody will place a demand upon your grace because you've not packaged your value. I can cook. I can bake. I'm a good speaker. I have a very good argument for government. All of that is just stories. Value. As important as it is, you must contend for productivity. Please shout it. Say productivity. That means you must turn your value by development and refining into products and services 
that are needed and useful then you can serve them with excellence to a targeted consumer base are we together now yes a great friend and brother pastor Nat Nathaniel Bassi one time he was sharing his story how that not not too many years before now he was in this same country and would sing with a good voice with grace and yet not be rewarded and honored the way he's doing now the difference was that he turned value or he moved past the step of value to productivity now you want to invite him for instance you must be willing to go through all of the logistics that you go through with joy why because you are not only bringing a man who is valuable you are bringing a man who is productive could this be why people keep commending you ah, madam your food is so nice and yet you are poor the day you make up your mind to now turn that value right from your kitchen now you begin to cook and find a way of packaging it and take it to somebody who has an influence over so many people and say this is just a seed for you to taste and the man says who did this you say you how long have you been doing this i've done this all my life okay i need 100 pieces of this by tomorrow you see that now god now positions your destiny helpers and in one month you're already cooking for kings it is only when you serve kings that you receive the reward of kings never stop developing yourself until you find out you are in the palace the palace is where the gold is the palace is where treasures are kept if you are serving gatekeepers and serving people thank god for that but keep evolving the day you see the king you can know that you have found rest you cannot receive the rewards of kings when you are outside the palace serve your way through excellence develop yourself whether you are in ministry some of you here are great men and women of god but you have not come to a point where you give yourself the frame that makes your value productive are we together the law of productivity when i found this it changed my life i made up my mind that i will invest in every aspect of my life and make sure that I continue to package my value and to serve it with excellence. Being valuable is not enough. Your value must be refined, your value must be packaged, and your value must be served with excellence to command a reward. Being valuable is not enough. Your value must be refined, your value must be packaged, your value must be served with excellence. To command a reward therefore tonight I encourage you to reject and fight mediocrity fight mediocrity like you fight Satan fight it out of your life it is the sponsor of a mediocre life is a sponsor of a defeated life fight mediocrity productivity requires exposure you cannot be productive until you are exposed Exposure means that you broaden your horizon beyond your current scope of sight. You have to be able to expand your mind and your thinking. Positive exposure is very, very needed if you will be productive. Productivity also requires creativity and innovation. You have to be creative, you have to be innovative. You have to be creative, you have to be innovative. write this down i thought to add this very quickly before we skip to the next area competence still about productivity competence and excellence are magnets attracting people resources and opportunities to your life competence and excellence are magnets attracting people attracting resources and attracting opportunities to your life competence and excellence are magnets please look up why do you go to a place like transcorp or any of the top hotels within this city and pay so much for a room or pay so much for a meal and sometimes the exact thing you are eating there 
are we together i was teaching the school of ministry students and we laughed over it that you can go to a hotel and just for a tiny cup of coffee you can pay three thousand whereas a shop just outside that hotel you can buy the coffee the spoon and the cup you will use for less than one thousand are we together because you are not just buying coffee you are buying the atmosphere too you are buying the excellence you are buying the competence you are buying the, the ambience the sense of honor everything is factored to make what would be 200 naira to become 3000 make up your mind to be productive make up your mind to be competent make up your mind to be excellent let's hurry up number four the law of increase so the first is the law of mental transformation the second is the law of value the third is the law of productivity the fourth is the law of increase in matthew chapter 25 just write it for reference when we read from verse 14 down to 30 matthew 25 the parable of the talents the bible says that the kingdom of god is like a man who went to his servants and delivered goods to them and then the bible says he gave unto one five talents two and one please pay attention and that in giving them he left them and the one who had five talents increased it to ten the one who had two talents doubled it and increased it to four the one who had a single talent went and buried it and when the man would come back to demand accountability he said what did you do with what i gave you and for the one with five received the reward the one with two received the reward and then the one with only one he said i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you did not sow and so i thought instead of um doing this and that and that let me go and bury it here is your one talent he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant it is not enough to have financial resources you must know how to build and to increase that is why many of us continue to receive the blessings of the Lord through your job through a business and yet we do not increase because we do not understand that increase is a law increase is not just something you do in business there is a law that brings increase second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 10 blessed be the name of the Lord second Corinthians 9 and verse 10 let me teach you something powerful now this is how money works this is a principle that helps you to distribute your financial resources for growth and for multiplication. Please pay attention. The principle that I'm about to share with you right now is what will help you distribute financial resources to ensure growth and multiplication. Here's what the Bible says. Now, he that ministered seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food. And what should he do? he should multiply your seed sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness four very important words here number one bread number two seed number three multiply number four increase in one verse that god can minister seed to the sower please say after me seed then say bread one more time say seed don't be tired say bread. bread that means for every when God blesses you with financial resources in every increase and every blessing that God gives you whether it comes as a salary whether it comes as profits from a business whether it comes as a one-off show of favor in it there is always seed and there is bread everybody say seed, seed. and say bread. bread now watch this the assignment of bread is to satisfy your current need the assignment of seed is to make sure you are not hungry tomorrow i repeat the assignment of bread is to satisfy your current need the assignment of seed is to make sure tomorrow there will still be food if you sow your bread you wasted it if you eat your seed you are going to lose god is that benevolent that out of every money he sends your way there is bread for today and there is seed for tomorrow 
when they cried the nation of israel cried for hunger god did not send seeds what did he send bread because they needed to eat it immediately now here is what most people do and i want to observe this respectfully speaking most of our elderly ones people within the ages of say 80 down to say maybe 70 60 that generation focused so much on seed and they forgot bread that means they focused they were so futuristic about securing the destiny of children and children's children that they forgot today there are many people is until they die you see how much they are worth now the children discover that this man who died had properties that he bought around but while he was alive there were times in that house they did not have food to eat he did not know that out of all the monies that god brings there is bread and there is seed he carried both bread and seed and sowed it into the future and now people were hungry and he himself did not benefit from the blessing of the lord upon his life and then you value one or two plots of land or one or two hectares of land and you find out that he left a total of 100 million and yet that same house children could not go to good schools that same house nobody had the opportunity to advance that was a mistake now our generation of young people our mistake is that we do not understand seed what we understand is bread are you getting it now so let tomorrow go places we eat both bread and seed today and then you find out someone who is supposed to be blessed today becomes a pauper and a beggar tomorrow overnight because they were bread conscious and not seed conscious are you learning something tonight that there was a generation that focused on seed and ignored bread you would find people who never built a house by themselves yet they had their assets and everything was in millions nobody benefited from their money not the kingdom not them not their children until they died and then you have people who come to claim the inheritance who have no basis coming to that family because they were focused on the future it is only when you are alive that you can get to the future god is that benevolent to bring bread for today and seed for tomorrow but when you have a generation that also as a revenge mission i won't suffer my father he has done his own he has gone me i will enjoy my life now let me tell you this let me tell you this remember this is a deliverance service let me tell you this if you think like that you will be naked tomorrow it is painful to taste of the wealth and the prosperity of of this kingdom and then tomorrow you go back and have a worse tomorrow than your yesterday the path of the just should always be as a shining light are we together so everything god gives you when god gives you money for some of you from this month when you collect salary or when you collect some profit whatever it is or just someone just decides to bless you as you hold that money I want you to remember the law of increase increase is not just something you do through business it is a law that what you are holding in your hand there is seed and there is bread there is a part of it that is for tomorrow and there is a part of it that is for today you must be honest enough to be fair on yourself with the bread that is for today but you must also be disciplined enough to allow the one that should get into tomorrow to get tomorrow let me tell you this if you were to meet your accountant and ask him please i need a total of every money that has entered my bank account from when i opened it you will repent for one year for the kind of wastage you will sit down and say i can't imagine that hundred million has passed through this account one billion has passed through this account but no house no car no education where did it go to i will tell you you ate both seed and bread is god speaking to us don't say apostle all that i earn is just fifty thousand. what will it do every seed is small there is no seed that is a tree there is no seed that is as big as my hand
God gave you favor January this year an uncle just blessed you and gave you one million what did you do you forgot God you forgot your future you forgot everything and you just said look I've suffered let me just let me let me do justice to myself now don't feel bad I'm not condemning you can I tell you this please you must obtain grace from God tonight to be disciplined enough to fight and reject the temptation anybody who advises you whether as friends and an association oh it's my birthday I have to spend it the way who said that why don't you take the time now and let your seed prepare a befitting birthday for you are we together there are people you see I'm, I don't mean to insult you but there are people who all they have in their account home and abroad is 500,000 yet you will see them in a hotel where billionaires are the billionaires have assets that pay for their liabilities so they can spend hundred thousand in a moment somebody who owns an airline can be there having a business discussion they can spend one million right there because there are people queuing up to return the money at the airport they are not stupid people and then you find someone in their midst who are we together God is speaking to us the house of God is a place of wisdom can I tell you this listen please look up have the courage to look at friends look at everybody to say look I like this idea but I may not have the budget for this for now I will note it and when I am ready they will look at you and are you saying that NMPC job you are working in don't fall our hand don't do this can I tell you summon the courage to let them know you have mental prosperity mental prosperity there are people who would have been house owners in this city if only they knew how to eat bread and sow seeds is that true I don't mean to insult you and please forgive me if you think I do but there are people who have spent 10 years 20 years 30 years in Abuja here they don't have one land as at the time land was 500,000 in some places 50,000 they watched it go from 1 million to 5 million to 10 million to 20 million there are people today as at the time they got their houses the surrounding lands were less than maybe 1 million they watch people come and today the only thing they have is a little maybe maybe half plot and they had the money how about people who can borrow 10 million or 20 million or 40 million to buy a jeep and be paying it with salary and then somebody now comes to hit that jeep and they tell you the shock absorber alone will buy you kekena pep <laughs> are you seeing the mistakes that we're making please take seriously what i'm saying we keep making very wrong decisions because we do not know that for everything god trusts you with in that ten thousand, there is bread and there is seed if you don't respect the seed in the ten thousand, one million will never come is someone learning for some of us by reason of this message you will go and open an account like i teach the students and refuse to collect the atm from the bank let that be the account where your seed apostle what do i do with it just make sure it is there first don't worry about what to do with it many of us have had the privilege do you know there are people in this nation who have had the honor and the privilege of meeting others who said look my house is valued at 30 million but i'm i'm relocating to america if you have five million take and they could not take an offer because all the seeds god said keep because of these days of favor you ignored it and you were eating it and now a house of 30 million that will be given to you five million but because you ate both bread and seed can i tell you this don't regret the mistakes you made yesterday start now make up your mind and discipline yourself to start now for everything god gives you every financial resource god gives you there is bread 
and there is seed. Are we together? Bread is for today. Seed is for tomorrow. Practice savings. Practice savings. When God blesses you, take out your tithe. Believe in tithing. 10% and then take out your seed. Many people recommend 20% of whatever you have so that you save it. I told the school of ministry students, you can save 20% of your income if you have time. What is pursuing you is what determines how you run. Is that true? If a chicken is pursuing you, you can run carelessly, but if a lion is pursuing you, you will run with the energy of an athlete. So if you know you have made mistakes and now at, at 40, at age 40, you are saving 20% of your income, you will not go far. When you are talking to a child of 13, 14 years, you can tell him to start saving 10, 20%. But I'm telling you, if you really, 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 really want to make progress financially, you must practice the law of increase and then learn to save. Save. There are two basic reasons why we save. Number one, for emergencies. Number two, for investment. Write it down. In another series, we'll take our time to deal with it. There are only two reasons why we save money. Number one, for emergencies. Number two, for investments. By the way, you may want to write this down. The only way money multiplies is through investments. There is no other way. The only way money multiplies is through investments. What is investment? Acquisition of assets. That is for another series. Wealthy people never take on any liability and expenditure until they can show the assets that will pay for it. They spend their lives acquiring the assets that pay for their liabilities. So when you meet a wealthy man and you say, Daddy, I want to celebrate birthday, he will not just carry one million and give you. He will check from all his investments which one will pay for that liability. If there is no investment that pays for it, he will be patient. That is the economy of the wealthy. The only way money grows, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me, investments. In another series, we may not have time to teach that now, but it is important for you to know that the law of increase is very important. You need to experience increase, not just the arrival of financial resources. Almost everybody here with decent planning, no matter what level, you can put something together while you are praying. Lord, open doors of favor for me, but then you are practicing your savings and you are putting something down god can now open a door for you and then you have abundant financial resources every time you spend everything you have know that your future is crying every time you spend everything you have you just punished your future practice frugality the absence of wastage justifiable expenditures be frugal especially where you are rising there are people who can afford to be you know uh, quite um, luxurious with their lives because they have paid the price to build systems that can replenish where you are starting and where you are rising you must be frugal can i be honest with you you know that you are really making progress financially when people underestimate your real worth because you reduce yourself many levels below your true worth so that you can grow people should not be able to look at you and estimate and say you are 10 million you are 1 billion you are 500 million you are 200 million you are 500 thousand no you should leave many layers below your true worth as a sacrifice to truly get to the wealthy place that is the philosophy of wealthy people a man may make may be a millionaire and yet you still see him living a modest life being frugal the day you see him acting as if he's a millionaire he has become a billionaire since so if you join him just because you made one or two million i hope you know a millionaire is not who, one who has one million or two million no a millionaire is one who has relationships that can maintain that level 
intelligence that can maintain that level systems and structures that can replenish at that level and then financial resources that is at least 10 million if not you are not a millionaire so you see all this philosophy of 1 million or 1.5 and we say we are millionaires then we say we have made it and then we crash back to 100,000 again as a punishment for not learning we start again and we repeat the same mistake life is a brutal teacher it will teach you as many times as you need to learn painful teaching tonight but a profitable one are we learning the law of increase for the sake of this series the next time we're going to look at the law of relation and then we'll look at the law of investments and you'll be learning that investment is not just about money like prosperity there are five levels of investment spiritual investment mental investment investment in your body and financial investment and then we'll be learning how to store wealth it's one thing to have so much but you must know how to store it the bible says strong men retain wealth there are people who have risen to one billion billions and 10 years after they crash back to the point that they cannot bring two hundred thousand. it's a terrible life that's not god's design for us it is the reason why in africa we do not perpetuate wealth because it starts and ends with us you start from zero naira you rise to one billion by the end of your life you're minus one your children start they balance up that to zero and start again it's not supposed to be so the bible says a good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children not his children you must be two generations ahead that's how you measure your success a quick recap number one the law of mental transformation number two the law of value are we still here number three the law of productivity number four the law of increase now we're wrapping up please pay attention this is a very sensitive moment now i'll have to end here for this series but i want to end by showing you that in this kingdom we have an advantage there is the prophetic dimension of wealth you may not learn this in a business seminar but it is true there is an advantage that we have in this kingdom we are not helpless there is the prophetic dimension of wealth we're about to pray this is very important in second chronicles chapter 20 when you read from verse 20 to 25 the story of jehoshaphat and judah when they were attacked by three nations that came in unity to fight them second chronicles chapter 20 we'll begin to read from verse 20 please let's hurry up for time the bible says and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of tekoa pay attention now and as they went forth jehoshaphat stood and said hear me o judah koinonia god is speaking and ye inhabitants of jerusalem believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established believe his prophets so shall ye prosper not just believe the business you are doing not just believe that your mind is transformed there is an advantage that i build in my economy for the saints in light are we together by the time you read down to 25 the people began to kill themselves and then all they came and they saw dead bodies there and the bible says jehoshaphat and the people they could not take the spoils away why will people carry gold to war because god wanted to use a prophetic dimension and give it to his people believers hear me the prophetic dimension of wealth is not a license for laziness it's a system of advantage incorporated in god's economy to prove to creation that there is a god that backs the saints are we together hosea chapter 12 and verse 13 very quickly and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt egypt is a place of captivity and by a prophet was he preserved 
in second kings chapter 7 from verse 1 just write it down you don't have we are not we don't have the time to read it elisha said this was a famine in in samaria i'm showing you how territories were restored through the prophetic hear ye the word of the lord thus saith the lord tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of samaria this is prophecy when there was famine the economists were still there when there was famine the business people were still there can i tell you there are times when your fishing will not bring fish it is not that your net is not good it is not that your skill is not good it is that there are powers that can stop the fish from coming there at that time you don't just need business acumen you need a prophetic advantage are we together in luke chapter 5 luke chapter 5 let's read that very quickly from verse 1 and it came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of god he stood by the lake of gennesaret uh-huh and he saw two sheep standing by the lake but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets what were they washing so they were valuable they had boats they had nets they were productive are we together now oh there are times they were responsible and transformed enough to go for fishing there are times that mental transformation can be limited there are times that your value can be limited there are times that your skill you are as productive as you can but because we live in a realm that is spiritual you will need jesus and he entered into one of the ships which was simon's and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people out of them now when he had left speaking he said to simon i show you the prophetic dimension of wealth launch out into the deep i don't care what it is that you have done i know your economic principles say it is until december it says in in two months you cannot be blessed but this one i respect your net i respect your boat i respect your transformation but i am jesus launch out into the deep and let down your net for a drought hallelujah here's what simon said master we have toiled all night we are not lazy we are valuable we are productive we've been doing this for a long time but the pandemic just came and all our skills and the company the company is still in place but there is no profit he said nevertheless oh there is a nevertheless in a believer's equation are you hearing me in a believer's equation it is not one plus one that is two economically speaking one plus one is two but there are times demons can change that two into zero so you are doing one plus one but your answer is not becoming two and jesus says step out now this is not economy this is the prophetic if you don't understand this dimension your wisdom will be limited this is where the fallacy of people ignoring god comes in ignoring the prophetic ministry after 10 years of excelling they will plunge down signed satan and simon answering said master we have toiled all night we have taken nothing nevertheless at thy word i will let down the net what happened verse 6 when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break they had never caught this kind of miracle let me tell you what the prophetic can do i believe in investments where you can be patient for 10 20 years and god will lift you i believe you can buy build houses and then be paying the rent break even after three five years but believe us we are not alone in this journey there is the prophetic dimension that can push a man overnight i repeat it is not a license for laziness that is why i taught you these other laws before introducing this dimension the mistake with we men of god in the body of christ is that we ignore all of this and we just tell people there is a prophetic dimension and there is so as they receive they become lazy they refuse to contend for transformation they refuse to contend to be valuable they refuse to be productive they refuse to master relationships they refuse to invest why because they know that at any time I can come 
But hear me, God did not bring you tonight just to learn economics. This is the house of God. Mysteriously, mysteriously, this house sustains the power of God to change lives and to transform even people's finances by the power of the prophetic. I am a product of these principles alongside the prophetic ministry. When the prophetic ministry is administered out of disalignment to scripture, it will destroy, it will produce imbalances. But when the prophetic ministry is administered within the boundary of scripture and then balanced by these principles, it can work wonders in a man's life. There is something called prepared blessings in this kingdom where Joseph can be sitting down and God can make Pharaoh. Joseph, you can interpret dreams, but your value cannot make Pharaoh call you. It takes an agency from heaven to make Pharaoh want to see you. I took my time to pray over the things that I'm about to declare. Let me wrap up tonight before we pray. Let me define for you what is the power to get wealth based on everything I've said. What then is the power to get wealth? Never forget this definition. Two definitions I will give you. Number one, the power to get wealth is an engracing by the Holy Spirit upon an individual upon an organization and engracing by the Holy Spirit upon an individual upon an organization that number one attracts to the life of that individual people opportunities and resources we're, we're defining the power to get wealth and engracing from the Holy Spirit that can come upon the life of an individual and it works like a magnet attracting to your life people the ministry of men attracting to your life opportunities attracting to your life resources number two the power to get wealth is an empowerment upon an individual or an organization to provide extraordinary solutions to the needs of men to provide extraordinary solutions to the needs of men leading to all kinds of rewards principally financial rewards an empowerment upon an individual an empowerment upon a family an empowerment upon a business an empowerment upon an organization a ministry to provide extraordinary solutions to the needs of men comma leading to all kinds of results honor influence principally financial rewards this is the power to get wealth so when the bible says god gives men the power to get wealth he places a grace upon their lives that can attract to their space people resources and opportunities and then he engraces the people to provide extraordinary solutions that will lead to all kinds of results rewards even financial rewards i have an assignment as we wrap up this series is our first financial series officially in this ministry it won't be the last there are many other dimensions to cover by the grace of god i'm committed to communicating the whole counsel of god but hear me truly i tell you there is a prophetic dimension of wealth i have worked in keeping with the laws of transformation i have worked in keeping with the laws of value the laws of productivity and all the other laws but many instances in my life i've had the honor and the privilege to receive a prophetic push and i can tell you the wonder that this did in my life we're wrapping up this is a very sensitive moment please pay attention please pay attention in matthew chapter 10 and verse 41 you want the prophetic to work for you you have to know how the prophetic works it says he that receives a prophet 
in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward and he that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward I don't have the time to begin to tell you different experiences in my life and in this ministry where God granted the grace to provoke the prophetic and when the prophetic came it took us to different levels of the blessings of the Lord can I tell you believers I know that many people have suffered manipulation from men of God imbalances from men of God but I love you too much and I fear God too much to not teach you the truth these truths you have learned the spiritual laws and part of this physical laws are irrefutable but the prophetic advantage comes into the life of a believer listen carefully to be able to lift you and to bless you there are two keys that provoke the operation of the prophetic please write it down and never forget the prophetic does not just work arbitrarily there are two keys that activate the operation of the prophetic number one honor honor to God and honor to the prophetic vessel that will speak over your life you cannot dishonor God and dishonor his mouthpiece and prosper by the anointing that comes from that mouthpiece now sometimes men of God use this sadly to bully people into you know just trying to manipulate people for respect that may be wrong but I'm telling you when you dishonor God and you dishonor his anointed you will never truly be able to receive number two the second way you provoke the prophetic to work for you is through the power of sacrifice Psalm 50 verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice you can't imagine how I've struggled to come and teach this prophetic dimension but because I cannot my mind I will not even be able to sleep knowing that I did not open you up to this dimension behind the mysterious prosperity you see of men and women whether in the kingdom or even in the secular accelerated wealth that just came into people there was a prophetic push and it came at the instance of honor and at the instance of a sacrifice I'm going to be speaking over your life I'm going to be declaring over you but let me tell you this for the first time in koinonia I'm going to be challenging you tonight to stand in partnership with the Lord and agree with God what sacrifice that you are going to give with understanding to break out of any financial circle of limitation and retrogression years of, of poverty and yokes of darkness listen if you don't believe what I'm teaching and what I'm saying please do not do it just listen to what I'm telling you you are absolutely at liberty to ignore what I'm telling you but if it is the kingdom and it is prosperity you desire whether you are following online or listening to me there are companies there are families there are individuals like Peter you have tried all night the truth is that you have taken out time to transform yourself you have bought books you've gone to school you've had seminars there are others who have you are valuable others you are productive you've done your best but there are times when your net may not catch any fish there are times when your boat can take you to the river but the net will not catch any fish at that point you need the prophetic when the pandemic came people lost money people lost businesses hear me if I stand here as a man of God to lie to you to manipulate you may a curse be upon me forever for the rest of my life I fear God too much and God has shown us too much mercy to stand here 
and face you inside outside all the overflows and the thousands and potentially millions of people across the globe following i fear god too much to do that but also i love you too much to look beyond my reputation and teach you the truth there are times that i have taken certain steps of faith i cannot begin to tell you the sacrifices that i've laid down at the altar that has made god to vow certain vows in my life it was in portacot in one of the occasions i went for a convention i was outside just like koinonia and the man of god came and preached i sat down didn't have much there was nothing and he challenged people just like this and i believed him I went back home that night God is my witness I gathered my whole bag and everything my rechargeable I zipped everything I prayed in tongues laying my hands on it for three hours non-stop by the next day I dragged that bag that was everything I had I stayed outside when people were dropping seeds and dropping whatever others were giving landed properties other people were giving whatever it is I just stood back there and the Holy Spirit now said I should wait when everybody had finished giving he said I can walk to the altar I dragged my bag and I knew this was Isaac I went and I dragged that bag like a madman people were looking at me there is a way you really want to get out of certain circles please help those under the anointing there there is a way please hear me I'm speaking to you by the Spirit some of you you're being here tonight is the prayer and fasting of mama for 10 years i did not go to school but oh god can you raise somebody from this family that in my lifetime let us taste of the blessing of the lord before i go to my grave god wants to give you an opportunity i'm not calling you out i'm not calling anybody out but can i tell you this i'm about to pray for you the truth is that the prophetic truly truly when it has to do with ending circles it will take a sacrifice when God wanted many sons, he took his own son as a sacrifice and buried him in the ground. He that weepeth, bearing precious seeds, shall doubtless return rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Can I tell you this? I'm not supposed to say it, but I will tell you. While I was preparing, the moment the Lord put it in my heart to teach on this prophetic dimension, God gave me an instruction myself on what to sow because i have to believe in this message too if i don't believe it i'm a hypocrite i don't leave off what people do and bring i leave off my own obedience when god told me what to sow i had to say wow and i did it immediately before coming and even at that i made sure that i packaged my own seed to come and that one is between me and god this one now is apostle preaching to everybody including me so don't think it's something that we're just talking i believe in what i'm doing can i tell you this for some of you you have been praying and saying lord how long i am tired of this circle for others you need to go and contend for transformation others you need to work on your value others you need to work on productivity others you need to work on all the spiritual laws but in addition to that God is giving us an opportunity tonight to end circles. When I dropped that seed and I returned back, I remember the Holy Ghost spoke to me outside and said, from this day, you have entered wealth. I didn't understand what that meant. Listen carefully. God is my witness. By the next day, 6.10 in the morning, someone calls me shaking under the anointing. Who is this? Are you so 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 and so? I said yes. He said, send me your account number. I just thought immediately these are all these scammers who just want. He said, no, 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 no. I woke up this morning with an instruction that I should do a transfer to your account. I said, what is this? I had a release in my spirit. I took the risk. I was surprised to see what the person sent. I said, what in the world is this? God now connected me to somebody, and the rest is history. God began to lift and to show himself faithful. Somebody who loved me so much, you will think that, I, I don't know. If I cough, that man will buy me a pharmacy, not a drug. 
I started watching these things happen. Only a fool leaves what works. I held on to that truth and I said, this must work. I remember one time in this ministry when we started, the Lord gave an instruction to, do, to empty the entire account. I stand by the God of heaven and I tell you the truth. That's an economic risk. There are times when under divine instruction, both bread and seed can go. You can cast your bread upon the waters. And after many days, he says, you will find it. In one week, seven days, what God did for this ministry, this dear vision he has so honored, till Jesus comes, we will not recover from it. I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables. Many of you are already practitioners of this truth. Some of you are practitioners of it, but by manipulation. Some of you are doing it, but it, it, there was no light and revelation. Can I tell you this? I'm about to pray for you. Our time is up. You are going to agree with God right now. As a family, as a business, as an individual. Lord, I believe you and I believe your servant. What seed? It is, I'm not, there's no amount we are not mentioning anything. I'm not calling anybody out. Everyone should participate, your children, whoever. If it's a seed that you want to give here, ushers, I don't know how, they, how you do it. Maybe the account details will be given. If it's something you want to copy the account details and so, but brothers and sisters, I want to pray for you. The prophetic to bring people out of seasons of, of, of shame and reproach, it is with sacrifice. A sacrifice is not an offering. No. If a sacrifice does not touch you, it will not touch God. I want you to stand. Oh, my lifting has come. Oh, my lifting has come. Oh, my rising has come oh, 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 oh my rise the lord gave me an instruction many years ago to carry a seed which was a sacrifice and take to canaan land and go and drop it before god's servant it was a huge sacrifice I got up like a madman, got the next available flight, went there, did everything I did. I came out with joy knowing that my life would change. And the Holy Spirit asked me to come out of the vehicle. He said I should lay my hands on the ground there in Canaan land. And he says from today you have entered the overflow anointing. I can show you different points in my life. A day came in my life when the Lord spoke to me and said, I will begin to raise people who will be personal financiers to your life, not ministry. I will begin to raise kings and nobles from across the globe whose assignment is to make sure you are comfortable serving the purposes of God. I believed him. A sacrifice is powerful. A sacrifice can change an individual's life. Listen to me. I'm going to give you room to pray in one minute. You know, some of you are in debt right now. Into the millions and into the billions, corporate debt, personal debt. Some of you have lost money in investments. There is no way you can get it back. Some of you, there are all kinds of problems. You have court cases right now. This kind goeth not, but by sacrifice. I'm going to give you two minutes our time is gone to cry before the God of heaven and to tell him Lord I have come to the end of this season of begging and borrowing and crying please take it serious please in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God no distraction everywhere overflows please pray 
some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears God is giving you an opportunity to change your life pray let it be from the depth of your heart your life is about to change oh my lifting has come oh my lifting has come oh my season has come oh my season i like you to declare lord what my father could not do what my mother could not do this embargo of poverty and hardship upon my life upon my ministry upon my family it's time to bring it to an end it's time to bring it to an end it's time to bring it to an end man of god pray you may be anointed but you need to engage the principle that brings supply for your life and for ministry otherwise you will suffer as if god did not call you businessman listen to me there are times your boat and your fish may not be able to catch you will need the master's voice but before the master's voice you will need to give your boat as an act of faith don't fight what god puts in your heart for some of you this may be the first time in your christian experience you will be making a real sacrifice prompted by a man of god for others that is the principle that kept lifting you to where you are in the name of jesus now please listen to me please hear me ushers i like you to just i don't know how you do it but position yourselves around just help them please my god i sense such a strong anointing here i'm about to break certain things now if there is a seed here and you have it your sacrifice whatever i check your writing we can have the account numbers pr projected please make sure no scammer or nobody defrauds you we are people of integrity whatever seed i want to pray for you when god spoke with joy i gave mine and i still made sure i said no i cannot come and be praying for god's people and then not hold a sacrifice to myself i believe in this thing that i teach with all my heart this is how he has brought us thus far there is no magic to it I want to pray for you there is a grace that will come upon you today please hear me many of you you will marvel and wonder at what God begins to do there is an anointing that will come upon businesses upon individuals I'm telling you this by the God who called me that at the instance of this sacrifice and those who are following from any nation the US Europe here in Nigeria there are pastors who are watching god is telling you to do this for your ministry there are business people who are watching god has been speaking to you for a long time now is the time i'm not asking anybody to come out if you're doing a transfer that is the account there alas if you have your seed lift it if it's a transfer do it if you're making a commitment please don't be emotional and don't make emotional decisions no but i can tell you by god this is an instruction that god gave me otherwise i would not do this since koinonia started in abuja this is the first time that a call is being made by the spirit of god you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life is changed you will never be the same you've touched his grace
please keep standing i'm going to pray i'm going to bow my knees to the god of my covenant listen to me if you have never believed a man of god in your life please i want you to believe don't waste your time please no movement around i want you to believe i want to pray for you the vision that brought me to ministry was a vision of a generation crying and said there's no food and there's no water and this i said who is the cause and they said you are the one i wanted to run and help them but i was afraid because there were people who were chasing me and a gray gray bearded man that i know now to be the holy spirit held my hand and he said let us go brothers and sisters i know what it means to be in insufficiency don't think this is just a preacher's talk at whatever level god has helped you there is more believe me when i tell you there is more it will look like arrogance to begin to tell you the faithfulness of god i just leave that as as let jesus be glorified but i want to pray for you i want you to believe and shout a resounding amen whether you are standing or falling i want you to believe it with all your heart father don't kneel you can stand i will do the kneeling i kneel and i bow before you by this apostolic and prophetic grace Every force sitting on anyone's financial destiny right now in the name of Jesus by the power that raised Christ from the dead let that force be dislodged now be dislodged now be dislodged now master we have toiled all night let me speak to someone here let let the seasons of toiling walking like an elephant eating like an ant let it come to end in your life now let it come to end in your life now hear me everyone here who is in debt whether personal debt or business debt i prophesy by the god of heaven between now and the next three months by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic come out of that debt now come out of that debt now every business here that has refused to grow has refused to rise hear ye the word of the lord between now and the end of 2021 be 10 times better than you are hear me there are many of us here it's not like you are lacking food to eat but you keep recycling the same financial level recycling you can't break out of it some of you have been on building projects for close to 10 years to finish it and move your family is not there by the power of the prophetic i push you to the next level of your destiny i push you to the next level of your finances
Hear me. I tell you, fire is falling. There are families here that love the Lord with all their hearts, but nobody has risen financially in that family for whatever reason. If you belong to that family right now, I'm speaking to you because the power of God is coming upon you. I decree and declare anyone here who is part of any family where the circle is just poverty lack and hardship i declare may that cause be broken now may that cause be broken now every ministry here that is struggling financially following online you are a man of god your church your ministry is struggling financially up today and down tomorrow in the name of jesus christ come out of that shame and reproach now i want to pray for you the lord is ministering to me that there are people it's not like you are poor but all your resources are hanging everywhere you keep watching resources that are supposed to have come but it does not come wherever it is manis kadi balakatoski ata paragada bashkata e preketaski abata in the name of jesus i decree and declare i command those resources to come to you now come to you now come to you now hear me there are some of you you were part of the lifting of many people but they forgot you that is the reason why you are where you are it's not that you are lazy you've been part of many people's rising but now they've left you where you are in the name of jesus i pray the destiny helper assigned to wipe your tears hold your hands and lift you wherever they are this week i command them to appear before your destiny appear before your destiny all those trusting God for jobs trusting God to start businesses trusting God for any value adding structure in the name of Jesus I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead beginning from this week let there be testimonies And anyone sitting on your glory your financial glory I overturn I overturn I overturn I overturn I overturn I overturn until you sit on your rightful place hear me there are many of you as you go to sleep tonight God will open up to you visions and he will tell you what to do believe me as you go to bed God will show you what to do yeah. hear me there are some of you here because of the urgency of the situation in your life a fish does not carry coin but when there is need to pay tax God can make even a fish to bring coin I pray for you from the most unexpected means may the resources to take away shame from your life may it appear in the name of jesus now hear me i speak over every sacrifice many of you are making profound sacrifices only god knows what you are doing individuals businesses ministries couple children young old organizations but i pray for you by the power that raised christ from the dead the same way fire came upon the sacrifice of elijah in the name of jesus may fire rest on your sacrifice hear me for some of you what you sowed is for the next level of your promotion 
and i really mean what i'm saying for some of you what you sold is for the next level of your political destiny some of you what you sold is for the next level of your destiny whatever has died in your hand hear the word of the lord let it come back to life now hear me if you have never experienced an individual calling you to say i want to help you i release that mantle on you now i release that mantle on you now i release that mantle on you now i release that mantle on you now, on you now. inside outside online receive that grace right now Please hear me hear me i am not praying for you for someone to just come and help you once i'm praying for someone who will build a system around your life <laughs> hallelujah please hear me if there is anyone who has victimized you financially either based on tribal sentiments based on religion based on political affiliation or whatever it is right now i lose those chains of you go forward 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 i want you to watch the marvelous testimonies of strange financial miracles you are going to be hearing in the name of jesus christ can i be honest with you for some of you you will be sitting in your home someone will bring the key to a house and say take i speak this by the unction of heaven for some of you will be sitting and someone will bring a car and say god instructed me to give you hear me for some of you someone will come and meet you and say god said i should raise your children till university Now hear this, the final prayer. There is an anointing that comes upon a man that can attract opportunities, that can attract people, that can attract resources. I taught you last week, if you want to pick nails from the ground here, yeah, you don't pick them one by one. You pass a magnet around them and it will pick everything. Some of you, that's what you are about to become right now. hear me some of you your helpers are already in koinonia they are in this place right now now therefore as i have received from the fathers of faith this is a relay this grace was passed it is not something we invented as i have really as i have received from the fathers and by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic this grace that mysteriously attracts resources attracts men attracts opportunity in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god koinonia take that grace now let that grace come on your head now let that grace come on your business now take that grace now take that mantle now be blessed be blessed be blessed and hear me any power that fights your prosperity from today in the name of jesus that power goes down before your face and any man who says over his dead body for this prophetic word to come to pass may the ground open and swallow them may the ground open and swallow them every yoke every enchantment every activity of witchcraft negative patterns i break it now in the name of jesus christ 
go and return with testimonies in the name of Jesus give Jesus praise give Jesus praise it's a new season hallelujah now please be patient I know our time is up you have your offering here or you have your your sacrifice please let me have one um, usher so that I can drop this if you are to drop let's minimize movement you can drop it with the ushers if it's an, a transfer you are making I want to simply make the altar call and we're done so we'll do this very quickly hallelujah I assure you that your life will never be the same there are people here even though we're teaching on a financial series remember we said the first level of prosperity please minimize movement let's honor the altar call the first level of prosperity is your spiritual prosperity whilst you heard me teach the Lord began to speak to you that you have not made your relationship right with Jesus or you are saying apostle truly I love Jesus but my obsession for money and all of these things have distracted me and I'm not serious spiritually but I want to make it right right now whether you are in this auditorium or in the overflow do not leave this place without giving Jesus a chance to your life I'm going to count one to five I want you to run and come and stand here everyone up the balcony around don't wait for anyone to come to be the first you be the first come and stand before Jesus this is an opportunity celebrate them they are coming I will count one to five and afterwards we are going to pray one quickly Koinonia celebrate them please ushers clear the way for them if they are coming for the altar call come to Jesus God bless you come 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 to Jesus I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the thing I've made it when it's all about you it's all about you are you coming run to Jesus three it's all about you it's all about you it's all about you Jesus thank you for coming every one of you you came to church to encounter Jesus you're coming please run please run I'm about to lead them to pray run quickly so that you catch up God bless you God bless you God bless you now all of you please lift your right hand high above your head Jesus is the one you are speaking to say after me Lord Jesus one more time say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification tonight I obtain forgiveness of my sin I obtain the gift of eternal life from you I decree and I declare that Jesus is my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never in jesus name keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious ones you have brought them to your hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching